Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Good evening. Please sit down. I have a brief statement here. We have, as you know, sent our budget to the Congress, and it's a fair and a responsible budget, and clearly does the job of putting America on course to a balanced budget through steadily declining deficits, as mandated by the new Graham-Rudman-Hollings law. Now, last Friday, a three-judge panel of the Federal District Court issued a ruling against a portion of Graham-Rudman-Hollings. We await a final Supreme Court decision, but nothing the Court says should or will remove our obligation to bring overspending under control. Congress shares that obligation. It must meet its responsibility to reduce deficit spending and pass a budget resolution by April 15th. For our part, we have met the targets for lower deficits, but not by cutting Social Security or essential support for low-income persons, and not by gutting defense or raising taxes on the American people. We mean to cut unessential spending out of the federal budget, and we mean to leave family budgets alone. All told, our budget meets the deficit targets in part by cutting about 5 percent from domestic programs. That's five cents on the dollar, and that's what we're asking Congress to cut. If Congress can't do that much, well, then they should at least give me a line-item veto, because I'll make the cuts and get the job done. Let's be frank. Those who say that our budget is DOA, dead on arrival, are really saying, brace yourself for a tax increase. I think taxpayers want Congress to get its own house in order. I do, too. So rest assured that any tax increase sent, sent to me will be VOA, veto on arrival. And now. President, the observers you sent to the Philippines have just returned with reports that they witnessed fraud and violence. Doesn't this undermine the credibility of the election and strengthen the hand of the communist insurgents in the islands? Well, Mike, I'm, I am not going to comment on this process, just as they are not going to render an official report until the counting has finally been finished. I don't think it would be proper to do so. Uh, yes, they told me uh, in just an interim few remarks and made it plain that they are not going to issue the official report yet, but they told me that they had the, there was the appearance of fraud and yet at the same time said that they didn't have any hard evidence beyond uh, that general appearance. So we're going to wait. We're neutral. And uh, we then hope to uh, have the same relationship with the people of the Philippines that we've had for all this, these historic years. If I may follow up, sir. Did what they tell you give you concern about the credibility there and what the impact will be for U.S. interests in the Philippines? Well, I think that we're concerned about the violence that was evident there and the uh, possibility of fraud, although uh, it could have been that all of that was occurring on both sides. But at the same time, we're encouraged with the fact that it is evident that there is a two-party system uh, in the Philippines and uh, a pluralism that I think would, uh, would benefit their people. And uh, we're glad to, to see uh, that particular thing happen, and we'll wait until we hear the outcome. Ellen? Mr. President, in the 60s, you opposed all the civil rights legislation, but more recently, you said that you were a part of the Martin Luther King Revolution. <coughs> Since that's, if that is the case, why is your administration so bent on wiping out the flexible hiring goals for blacks, minorities, and women? And I'd like to follow up. Helen, we're not, we're not wanting to do that, but we have seen, uh, in administering these programs, we've seen that the affirmative action program was becoming uh, a quota system. Now, I've lived long enough to have seen quotas when they were employed long before there was a civil rights movement, when they were employed in my youth to definitely discriminate and use the quota as a means of discrimination. And 
Therefore, we feel that, uh, yes, we want affirmative action to continue. We want, uh, we want what I think Martin Luther King asked for. We want a colorblind society. We want the ideal will be when we have achieved, achieved the moment when no one or when nothing is done to or for uh, anyone because of race differences or religion or ethnic origin. And uh, it's done in, not because of those things, but in spite of them. President, the affirmative action order specifically forbids quotas. And I'd really like to say to you, do you think if you had been born a black or a woman that you would be president today? I didn't think I'd be president today when I was born or for great many years afterward. But Helen, no, the, uh, the thing, whatever the law may say, and I know what Hubert Humphrey said about it, and this is what we're talking about. We were talking about the practice. Uh, Sir? Uh, not individually and personally, no, but we find down there at the, at the uh, bureaucracy level and out there actually in personnel offices and so forth. Uh, they choose the easy course, set a, down a system of numbers and say, well, we'll go by that. And this is what we're trying to correct. Now, wait a minute, if you will let me please do something I haven't done before, but just recently a group of newcomers to your ranks came into the Oval Office and I met them and I thought that since they are newcomers, at least just as a representative uh, here to start with, uh, let me call on a couple of those. I don't even know where you're sitting. Maybe you didn't have your hands up or not, but uh, we started just two of them and then we'll go on with the regular hands up. Uh, Dave Beckwith of Time. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, recently, two of your top economic officials, OMB Director Miller and CEA Director Beryl Sprinkle, have suggested that the uh, Federal Reserve should be tightening a little more, uh, worrying about inflation in, uh, in uh, conducting the nation's monetary supply. Do you agree with them that the Fed has been too loose lately? Well, I have to admit that and you know, it isn't an easy, the tools aren't that sharp that you can maintain the money supply exactly where you want it all the time. And it is true that recently it got above their own bracket, their own line of where they wanted to keep the increase. And uh, sure enough, you saw a couple of percentage points on the uh, low side of the zero, of the, of the period. Uh, added to what has been uh, well under 4% inflation rate. So I think this is what they were referring to, that we just, we've got to keep our eye on that and keep it there as long, as much as we can. 